everybody, Chris here from Baby Lock, and today I would like to show you one of my favorite attachments that I use when I'm hemming uh, garments, whether they're knit or woven. And I use the cover stitch, whether it's the narrow, the wide, or the triple. It is the single downturn feller. And I love the one inch, so that's the one I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the attachments and my prep and give you a bunch of tips that I've learned over the course of the many garments I've made with this attachment. So the first thing is that when you look at the attachment, you'll see that you have what I call a platform. It's where your fabric is gonna sit. And then on the far right, there's this edge, and I call it a waterfall edge because it's really what the fabric does is it falls over that edge to the underside. That's where the magic happens, is when you see, here's that waterfall, and all the way over here is what we call the stopping point. So from the waterfall to this point here, it is a one inch. Just to show you, here's my sample. There's the front, and voila, there's the back side, and that turned that under perfectly one inch for me. I didn't have to sit at my iron and press, use pins, use binder clips. It does it all for me. So let's get started with this. When we look at the bed of our machine, you'll notice that you have two screw holes that are closer together, and some of you on your machines might have the two holes that are a little further apart. Always use these two closest to the foot. Then you'll need what we call the positioning screw, and we're going to place the attachment over those two holes, meaning this little slider here. And what this little slider is, it allows you to adjust the position of that attachment in relationship to your needles. And I'm only gonna use one screw. Reason is, is that I'm gonna move this to the far right, and if I had two screws in there, it wouldn't, the second screw wouldn't be holding anything. I couldn't get it in there. So we're gonna tighten this down. And I'm just gonna get it in place so that I can start um, actually placing that fabric in. But before I do that, one of the things that really helped me out when I was learning this attachment and how it functioned and how to be more accurate with it was I started marking my fabric. And what I do is I mark my fabric from the fabric edge up one inch and this one inch is where it's gonna waterfall over. And this edge, of course, is what's gonna be caught by that cover stitch. This line right here is what I use with my needles, okay? And again, this really helped me understand how it turned. It helped me with my alignment so I knew how to align things quickly off the bat. I'm at the point now where I usually just kind of mark uh, about two inches at the top. And sometimes I don't even do that. So we're gonna take that fabric, place it on top of the attachment, and we're gonna slide it on that platform. And as you can see, that fabric edge is coming to what we call the waterfall, and it will start to, to fall over. Now you might have to help it a little bit, and that's where tweezers come in handy. So I'm gonna slide this over, and you can see that falling over. Just get that underneath there, and keep moving it over. Make sure your presser foot is up when you do this. And if you see, I just took my hand and kind of rolled it so that edge is there, and then I'll come back here and I'll just roll that also so that edge is right where it needs to be. Okay, so you can see that first marking is right on that waterfall. My second marking is way over here. There's that first needle, so I need to move the attachment over to the right so I can align that left needle with that marking. I want that left needle just to sit to the left because I want it to graze that fabric edge, okay? You don't want it to go into that fabric edge, I want it to graze the top side. I've actually attached a Teflon foot, I find that works best on knits, at least for me. And the other thing I do is I lengthen stitch length out to about three and a half, four. Again, uh, knits I think are more accepting of that long stitch length and it looks nicer with that longer stitch length. Now I'm just gonna start stitching. So while I'm stitching, there's a couple of things that I always do. I always make sure that marked line, again, this is me learning this attachment, is right here along that waterfall. And I do kind of hold that hem just a little bit. I think it's just for me, it's just precaution. And then I decide at some point that mm, I might wanna take a peek 
at what's going on on the underside. And I'm pretty pleased with that. That looks good. And then I'll just keep stitching to, to the end. And again, this is just a flat piece of fabric or a flat uh, hem that you're creating, I should say. And what's gonna happen is when you get to the end, you don't have anything else to hang on to. And this is, I think, sometimes where uh, we panic and we don't know what to do. This is what I do. I take my tweezers and I'm gonna place that right here because what I wanna do is hold that fabric so it doesn't have an opportunity to slide out of that waterfall area. And I do that till I come to the very end, meaning my needles leave my fabric. I clip the threads and then this is my front side and then I'm gonna look at the back side, and that looks pretty darn good. I could have moved the guide a little bit further to the left, or even a little bit further to the right. I have these two screws that sit here that allow me to adjust the position down a little bit, which would give me a little bit more space as far as that movement uh, in one direction. So now that you've mastered this on what we call a flat surface, um, in this case, I would just in a sense sew my hem or my last seam, and then I would have my hem. But what about doing it in the round, okay? There is a trick to doing it in the round. It's something that uh, I practiced and practiced and figured out. And the first thing I have to do is I do need to release these threads uh, so that I can slide my fabric piece uh, underneath. So here's my in the round. and. If you think about this, if I were to do this in a round, I would actually sew this to the attachment, but there's a little trick so that you don't do that, and I'm gonna show you how that's done. So we're gonna load this in the same manner underneath that presser foot. And again, um, what might be a little easier for you is if you take that back side here and take that front side, just kind of pinch that hem and then move it to the right. You can see how easy and quick that was. And I'm gonna lower that presser foot. And now I'm going to stitch around. And when we get to the end, I will actually show you how I manipulate the fabric to finish the hem. And while I'm stitching, I just kind of keep that marked line on that waterfall. So I know where I'm at. I'm always watching what's happening here, not what's happening at the needle because I can control this, I can't control that. And I actually just move my attachment a little bit further to the left so that that marked line is really aligned with that C3, or C1, excuse me, needle position. Now I'm coming to, uh, to my starting point. And this is where I had talked about, if I keep stitching, if you think about this, if I keep stitching all the way to this point, what is gonna happen? I'm gonna stitch that attachment and in a sense into that fabric. So how do I, uh, how do I, what is my workaround I should say with this? This is what I do. I pull it out of the attachment, just like this. I'm leaving that attachment there. I'm gonna straighten out this uh, seam and then I just finish it. Okay, I don't take anything off because I don't want the start and stop of my seam to be uh, two times. I'm just going to literally continue to the end and all that I'm doing now is using this needle marking with my markings here to continue my stitching until I get to the point where I'm ready to overlap that stitching. Okay, so now I'm going to take my fabric out from underneath my presser foot I'm just gonna slide this to the right. I'm gonna trim these threads. And you can see here's my start and stop where I overlapped. It was a little off. Sometimes that happens. Again, it's just practice. 
And you can see I completely sewed in the round with that single downturn feller one inch. Okay, so again, to recap how I did this was when I got to a point, I took it out of the attachment and then just finished it. And I only had probably about three inches. Don't make it 10 inches, keep that, that distance smaller, but enough that you can pull everything out easily, okay? So what we wanna take a look at is there are two more attachments to this. One of them happens to be the 5 eighths inch. It's the same principle of that whole waterfall and the hem depth is on the back side. And then the other is going to be that quarter of an inch. And when I mark my fabric, I do it in the same manner. I do the hem depth twice from that fabric edge. So I have my waterfall marking and I have my line for stitching. That was the quarter inch. And then here is that five eighths. And the end result is, this is your 5 8 inch seam here, or hem here, I should say. There's that back side. This one was on a woven. It was also done in the round using that same principle. And then this is your quarter of inch. Now, when you do the quarter of an inch, you can only use a narrow stitch because that seam or that hem depth, excuse me, is not that deep. So again, this is where you're gonna have to adjust the position of this guy, meaning left or right depending upon where that needle is going to ride on the top of that fabric edge. You may find that these two screws here might have to be adjusted and all that that does is that moves that attachment up or down and you're probably gonna move it down just a little bit. So that's the single downturn feller. I hope you really like it. I hope you use that one inch. It happens to be my favorite. Uh, and I think that that's it for this one. So I guess I'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.